dude, can we have a serious conversation? What the hell was Michael Penix Jr. doing with 90 seconds left on the clock in a tie game in field goal range? Why is he hucking the ball into these high-risk situations in the, in the end zone when he could have just passed it to the RB, run out the clock, done a timeout with like 20 seconds left, and then kicked the game-winning field goal? Like, I know he, they got the job done, and I, I bleed purple, you know, till the day I die, Huskies for life, but what is he doing, man? He's throwing the ball into the end zone in double coverage. They've already got a, a, a winning position. It doesn't make any sense. Canucks Sharks game was really something. Um, I didn't see it because essentially on Saturday I was. What's the opposite? Lucid is good, right? Lucid is when like someone is sick but conscious. I was basically I was the opposite of that. Let me see. Is this the word I'm looking for? I don't think I've ever used it in a sentence. Mm, it was. It's definitely not a gog. I was not agog. I was not eager or curious to hear or see something. Sleep isn't the uh, sleep isn't the word I would use. What I would say about Saturday is, um, you know, like when you're um, trying to fall asleep on a bus or an airplane or something like that, and you're really really tired, but for some reason you can't get into a restful sleep. <clears throat> so instead you enter like a, a limbo time warp where you fall asleep for two minutes and it feels like three hours, but you wake up and it's been two minutes and then you fall asleep for two hours and then you wake up and it's actually only been three minutes. That was basically what was Saturday was like for me. I was in limbo for the entirety of Saturday. I... I woke up at 5 a.m., took a shower, went back to bed until noon, managed to gather my strength to go down to the couch from like noon until 5, and then slept from 5 till 5.30, at which point I was okay. <laughs> Relatively okay. Too much fun on Friday? No, I was hit by an invisible bullet with uh, some kind of virus on it. I just keep saying it's norovirus, but like, again, I'm not going to make this like a Canadian medical system thing again. I think this is just the reality of, of food poisoning or like short viral or bacterial infections. You're supposed to, legally speaking, you're supposed to report any cases of norovirus to like the Canadian public health authorities so that they can track outbreaks. How the hell am I supposed to track norovirus when by the time I could even get to the hospital to figure out if it's norovirus I would have no symptoms left it's simply not I'm, I'm not taking four days off from work to go to the emergency room get triage to like 98,000 in line just so I can get told to go piss in a cup drop it off at life labs and then seven days from now they'll be like yep that's the thing you had they use statistical models for those yeah they still need my piss if they could just like statistically model my piss or here's one that they could do. They could just trust me when I tell them what my symptoms are instead of making me get like dosed with radiation for a CT scan just because I got diarrhea. But what do I know? I'm not a medical professional. I honestly think what happened is that there was some kind of gut bacteria going around in my kid's daycare and my kid just tanked it. She was like, 15% sick on Thursday and Friday. And I was like, that's pretty like, that's the ambient winter sickness at all times. Like whenever you're like, how are you feeling? She's like, I feel good. But you're like, you're, you got like a little sniffle or something. That's just what it's like from October to April, basically. But then I think I got it for real. And then I gave it to Kate. But she just, she face tanked it, dude. We just got hit with the, the splashback. They want you to be sick so that you'll buy meds. No, your conspiracy theory doesn't fly here because you got to pass through a thousand means tests just to be able to purchase the antibiotics legally. I would love it if your conspiracy theory was true and they were like, here, to fix your problem, buy this medicine. But that shit is not how it goes down. <laughs> Instead, they're like, uh, yeah, I know you say you're sick, but we get a lot of people in here pretending to be sick. 
It would be a tragedy if we accidentally gave antibiotics to one person who didn't really need them. Even if 99 people with real problems have to suffer, we can't risk that one person getting those juicy antibiotics with no need. Anyway, this time I just beat it, though. UBC lost the Vanier Cup to Montreal. Yeah, nobody cares. Uh, no disrespect to the seven fans of Canadian university football out there. Ever tell you this story? In my first year of university, my school won the Vanier Cup. That's the Super Bowl of Canadian college football. football. Our quarterback won league MVP. Bro works at Investors Group now. There's no, like, no disrespect at all, but there's no future. The best player in Canadian football, Canadian uh, college football at least, just ends up doing a completely different career. My college is ranked number one for NCAA hockey. See, first off, you should be proud of yourself. The University of Michigan is a good school. Ann Arbor is a great town. Kicked the piss out of Ohio State this weekend, which we're all grateful for. Jim Harbaugh did nothing wrong. I've become American. It's great. Dude, you have to understand. I'm genuinely becoming American, and I'm happy with it. Being sick on Saturday turned me American. I got on the couch. I hit the power button on the television. It was just 14 hours of college football back to back to back to back. I was like, why would anyone not be seduced by this? This is crazy. And then you know what happens after, after Saturday's over? You go to sleep, you wake up Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific time, you turn on the TV, back to back to back to back to back NFL football. And you can really appreciate the difference. After you watch Hawaii play against Colorado State, you can appreciate the difference in athleticism in the NFL. I mean, people, it's amazing that people are not dying on the field every day. They're catching a pass thrown as fast as a bullet from a gun uh, and then getting obliterated by a 300-pound superhero who hits them with their helmet right in between their ribcage. And then they just, they, they go down and they look dead and then they just get up and then they hop like two times and they go like this. And then they just go again. It's crazy. By the way, I said this in chat. I mean, this is just... I haven't had like a weekend where I just looked at my phone and scrolled in a long time. I haven't had the luxury of being very, very sick and unable to do anything else. I watched a streamer play five minutes of a game uh, that was like a World War I simulator. And forgive this take. This take might be a little bit problematic. A lot of people, there's that famous quote, right? I don't know what weapons World War III will be fought with, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. I think that, that he was cooking. Whoever said that, he was cooking. Because 19-year-old kids these days, when you watch them play first-person shooters, they are not the same as 19-year-old kids 100 years ago during real World War I. Like, if, I'm not 100 years old yet, but if you would put me on the front in World War I, I would have just been like, he's over there, bang, like I'm missing nonstop. The comms that were coming through from these kids who have grown up on like PUBG and Fortnite and Siege and stuff like that, they were like, there's three dudes, There, I see three members of the French army, there's 75 glinting with the Mauser uh, in the foxhole over there, over, and then like it, instantly they're like, sir, yes, sir, sir, yes, sir, and they just like glass them with this World War I weaponry. Like, did, forget about the drones and the nukes and the stuff like that. Just the comms and the reflexes and the tactics that these kids have. A hundred years ago, you didn't have to worry about that. It was just like idiots, right? Myself, I, I count myself in that group. Especially like, you know, when you first got drafted, you're like three months ago, I was literally in the wheat fields. Now I'm out here, I'm like a professional soldier, but I, don't, I just went through basic training. These kids have been in the Ender's Game hyperbaric time loop for 10 years already. Thank you, Joe Biden, for legalizing Fortnite. So true. I don't want to sit over here. I want to sit over here. This is where I'm centered on my monitor. 
But this is not where I'm centered in my video frame, obviously. Evil Nick Merckx be like, right aligned. There's a pun in there somewhere, I guess. Um, the joke has layers. Now, just something like that. Something like this. Something like this. Something like that. That looks fine. Twelve-year-old kids watching the stream be like me at age twelve when the Hunger Games Catching Fire came out, and they take the elevator up into the Hunger Games, and the aspect ratio goes from four to three to sixteen by nine. <sighs> That's true, I was like 25 or 26 when it came out actually, but 2.6 billion views. Oh, that's loud as fuck, bro. <laughs> that is loud as hell. The only thing I can think of is that this is it doesn't sound like fancy to me. Let me try it again. First things first, I'm the realist. Drop the bass, make the whole place feel this. And I'm still in the murder business, I can hold you down like I'm teaching lessons in physics. You should want a bad like me. Something, something, something like me. Cup of ace, cup of goose, cup of crisp, cup of doop with a tapa 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 on my wrist. I don't know this one. <laughs> Unless the, the, um, it's either Fancy or The Mother We Share by Churches or Royals by Lord. Skip me. Let's see what the piano sounds like. I mean, the chord changes are, they're hidden. And it's, it, I meant to tell the lore keeper that lore keeper, I believe there is an entry in the database for this, but I don't know what it is yet. Let me get a, let me get to synth one plus synth two. I know it. I just don't know what it is. Tim Burton ambulance be like. Let me get synth three. Two point six billion views, huh? Wait, ah, oh, wait, wait, wait. The chandelier gonna swing. I'm a chandelier. Yes, it is chandelier. Okay, I knew it was in there. I knew it was in there. It is indeed chandelier. I don't like her, but she can sing. Just fucking horrible, man. Musicians in front of the SkyTrain station on Granville Street be like... No, I know she's like uh, canceled as well. That's not really why I dislike her. I dislike her because I don't like the art that she produces. Seeing her then get canceled for something completely unrelated to the reasons for my distaste is, I guess, just a bonus. <laughs> what did she do? She's annoying as fuck in the Rubber Ducky Ensemble medley on Sesame Street. Everybody else just singing like the, the melody the way it was written and she's going like 35 times extra. Shit pisses me off, man. Why is she canceled? I don't know. I'm not 19. Go look it up. It's outside of my purview. You're the one who said it? Yeah, I can tell you that it's raining outside. I didn't make the damn cloud. Hey, Anel, did you listen to much dubstep between 2010 and 2014? Nope. No, I did not. 
I do know I, I'm familiar with it. I know it goes. It's, oh my God, Nintendo 64. Yeah, I'm familiar with all that. Bazingle goes crazy today. The rise in popularity of squeaks and its consequences have been disastrous for Western society. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Okay. One day, we're going to get a full card on Pokédoku, and people are going to lose their mind. Um, but I don't know if that day is going to be today, okay? Because what the heck is Ga- No, I know Galar! Galar is the- it's the London version, where, like, the coughing has a, uh, like, a, a, a top hat on. Coughing is a smokestack. Deepest, bluest, my head is like a shark's fin. You know what I'm saying? How can something be grass and fire type, bro? That's just not even possible. It's weak to itself. Okay, Galar. Galar. Galar was... Uh, I'm screwed. Monotype steel. It's easy. Steelix. How could it not be monotype steel? It's literally named steel. How about Reggie Steel? Reggie Steel! Now, Reggie Ghost? Reggie Ghost? Ghost. Wait, you can just do this? Monotype Ghost. Who would be the most ghost like? What the hell is Gimme Ghoul roaming? It sounds like uh, the network you connect to when you go to a different country. Rotom Frost? B Buddy is literally just an icebox. Are you kidding me? Now, I'm, I just don't think I'm going to get a grass ghost or a grass steel or a grass fire or anything from the Galar region. I can't believe I thought I was going to get a perfect card today. Monotype ghost should be easy, though. Chandler. I'm going to guess maybe there's some fire involved there. It's hard. Are, don't spoil this for me, chat. But are there really only three ghost types in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow? Whenever I see Ghost, all I can think of is Ghastly Haunter Gengar. Who else could there be? Drowsy Hypno, those are psychic. Kabuto, he's a fossil, he's not a ghost type. Three more guesses. Galar Ghost. Okay, this is where we use Pokemon Go logic. Galarian. <laughs> Wait, you can't just type in Galarian? And what did they... Like, I don't understand how it's okay for them to put Darmanitan in here, but if I type in Galarian, it's considered cheating? Do they have it like that's, that's considered cheating? That hardly seems fair. Type Galar, not Galarian. Galar. No, oh, I think they, they saw through our tactic on that one. What the hell is Gengar Gamax, bro? This looks like a mini golf course. Okay. Well, you know, wait, 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 wait. Isn't this the one that introduced the G Maxes? Nope. Grass, steel, X, X. You know this guy? You know the guy I'm talking about? X. Can I get some help on this one, Chad? Axel? Axu, this is the guy. I don't know if he's grass steel, but. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Really? He's green and has some metal. That's got to be like grass steel. And then grass ghost is just crazy. Grass fire is insane. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I got nothing here. I can't believe they, they won't let me use Galarian. I'm going to say it's Pikachu. Now, let's be realistic. Could we... You've got to figure out which of these could I have gotten. Because some of them I, I could not get. And that's fair. But some of them I could have gotten. So I got this, and I got this. There's no shot I'm getting Gravard or... Ogre Pond Hearth Flame Mask? What is this, man? I don't think I could have gotten any of these. Now, that being said, I do have 15 Kartanas. 
But like simultaneously, I never know what it, that's the one you just do the raid. And then like after the raid, I'm like, I'm never going to see this origami guy in my life. They're all real. I know they're real. I'm just like, they're not real to me. <laughs> it's probably the best grass type you own. Bro, don't be ridiculous. The best grass type I own. Hang on. It's been a while. I'm booting it up right now. There's no, no, it's not Venusaur. Don't insult me. I may be a, a original 151 guy, a Gen 1-er, but at the same time, I recognize that all of those Pokemon are uh, bad for Pokemon Go. It's been so long, they're like, would you like to sync it with your Google account? Yes, I would. Sure, go ahead, Niantic. Read my emails. You already know like my exact location at all times anyway. Roserade! Yeah! Roserade is... That's my best uh, DPS, man. My best grass DPS. It's Roserade and then like nine Kartanas and then Breloom. Breloom? Anyway, so we've established one thing is that I don't know Pokemon that well. That's such a Johto take. You're so skibbity, you probably think this Galar is about you. Indiana. Jones. And the Raiders of the Lost Ark. This Harley Brothers. Harley Brothers. It's got a certain Jumanji-esque vibe to it, wouldn't you say? Hey! There's something about movies you see when you're a kid that they stick in your brain, man. Like me watching the rest of Home Alone when I was sick on Saturday, when Macaulay Culkin unfurls his battle plan, and it's like, it's got the blueprints for the house and it's written like in crayon at the top of it. Like that image, I hadn't seen that image in like 27 years. But it instantly like hit a part of my brain that still stored it. It was like, I've been holding this for you. He is a psycho in Home Alone 2. He's crazy in Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2 is messed up. Dude, by the way, in Home Alone 1, he didn't do anything wrong to get left home alone. In Home Alone 2, he, d he wasn't left home alone. He abandoned his family. He got on the wrong airplane. And then when he got to the airport, he said, excuse me, ma'am, where am I? And she said, New York. The dude could have been like, hey, can I get a ticket to like fly to home to see my parents or like to Miami or something like that? Like surely they would have just spotted him the money. It was the 90s. Nowadays, they probably would have just killed him. But like instead he says, let's go. And he's got like a recording of his dad uh, like with his credit card number and stuff. Oh, no, he has his dad's wallet. That's right. So he just takes a limo into the city and then like defrauds a hotel. He's probably staying in a suite that costs like $1,500 a night in 1992. Like credit card, you got it. My brain must be off its hinges because I believe you. That's why I'm going to let you go. I'm going to give you till the count of three to get your no good lion four flush took us out of here. Before I fill you full of lead. I don't know why. Those moments are always like the funniest part of all the Home Alone movies. I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. As a kid, those movies obviously seemed like they were from like the 1950s. As an adult, I'm like the dedication to make the fake 1950s movie just for a bit in a kid's movie that none of the other, like none of the kids watching would understand at all, but all the parents would love is very good. Celebrity mashup. This is Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Jake Gyllenhaal. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt's face and Jake Gyllenhaal's hair. That's a gimme. Average score 4.8. What was the least got celebrity mashup? Bro, people are horrible at celebrity mashup. People are terrible at celebrity match mashup. Maybe you're just a freak. Well, that's well known, okay? You're weirdly good at it. You know what's crazy is that this is why you have to generate confidence from within. Anytime I did like uh who is this on Sporkle, 
people were like, you're face blind. And I'd have to tell them, no, I'm not. I'm actually really good with faces. They'd say, no, you're not. You didn't know that that was fucking Magnus Carlsen mixed with the Grinch or something like that. I'm like, yeah, it's because the human brain is like not meant for that. I had, to, I had to push back on that and not let people get into my head. I'm not face blind. I'm good with faces, bro. Your hair vision's out of control? I know. I guide others to a treasure I cannot possess. Soda, lime, mint, rum. Obviously, this is right, but what is it? Spear, spear soda, lemon, lime, lemon, mint, soda, rum, types of candy, f candy flavors. Mojito ingredients. That was a good one, though. Once we got things that are sticky with a stick in it, it was over. Rum-flavored candy? Yeah, some of do. Back in the day, in the 90s, you get like a rum-flavored lifesaver or something like that. Didn't you hear, chat? I'm based for not knowing that's a mojito. It's actually illegal to order a mojito from a bartender because they take a long time to make. Yeah, 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 I know. Everybody that's a bartender is like, it's not illegal. Just order one. They're fun to make. But people in the comments who have never been outside are like, I would never order a mojito from a bartender. And I would tip 200%. And I would never let my three-year-old approach a dog with its hand outstretched to try to get a, a scritch of its chin. Don't order it during a big rush. I say this not to cause a kerfuffle, but if you have a big rush at your bar slash restaurant, that sounds like your problem. I didn't advertise the happy hour special. I didn't build the establishment. I didn't deliberately understaff the place to get an extra 20% lining my pockets just because I own the building. That's a management issue. I'm not, listen, your mojito is going to take 20 minutes to come then you're never going to see me again, okay? And that's fine, because I would only order a mojito on vacation, which means I'm probably not coming back to begin with, but you won't see me again, let me put it that way. You did create excess demand? Bro, I'm, I'm a customer in your establishment. What do you mean I created excess demand? Me, when I go to the bar and have the audacity to order a drink that's on their menu, um, could you not, please? What are you talking about? You know what you should do if, if there's a big rush at the bar and you can't have cocktails anymore? You should turn that negative into a positive. The, the head of bartending, the CBO, should be able to hit a button that makes like an alarm go off. And it says for the next 25 minutes, it's beers only. But beers are 25% off. That should burn off a little excess demand. Nobody's making cocktails. You're slinging Miller High Lifes. You know, you can serve like six of those a minute. That's a great idea. I know. That's why it's probably like illegal. Most of the fun ideas for alcohol consumption are illegal because society has proven that they can't handle it. <laughs> they can only do stuff like that at like resorts in Mexico and stuff like that. In like Philadelphia, they can't do it. Please stop hearing so many people agree with you when they haven't worked service is driving me crazy. Listen, okay? You had 10, 15 years of everybody bending over backwards for the service staff. It's time for entitled customers to come back. You had it so good for so long. People were tipping a dollar on a $5 drink that takes two seconds to pour. Then you started to turn around the iPad and you're like, 25% mass service, 30% pretty good, 50% best service I've ever had. You've taken it too far. The, the, the whipsaw is coming back in the other direction. I'm not ordering any mojitos, okay? You don't have to worry about that. I would just say it would be nice if you took them off the menu if you're not allowed to order them. What's messed up? I'm the best customer you'll ever have. Well, I don't know. There was that guy who said, tell me what tip you want. And then the dude said, why don't you just give me what you think I deserve? And then when the, ser when the server walked away, he said, if he'd said a million dollars, I would have given him a million dollars. But instead, he said, give me what you think I deserve. So I'm just going to give him a hundred bucks. Me, if I have to work as a server, I don't know, a million dollars. I get, I look at the receipt. They give me one dollar. Sorry, kid. I was going to give you a hundred bucks, but then you decided to be greedy. What the fuck? Come on, man. 
We got to trade customers. Sorry, I got a, a little burp. It's hard to tell if it's a norovirus burp or a Coke Zero burp. That's a Coke Zero burp. We go again. What is up with this? It, why does it look so wavy, bro? It's like, it looks like one of those, like, you know, when you see like a picture of the earth, but they slice it so that it folds into a globe instead of folding into a cylinder. Like, it looks like that. Let me think about this. 15 ounce can of chili. Is that fluid ounces or is, I, why am I talking like I'm like a nine-year-old kid from Princeton, New Jersey at a national spelling bee? Is that fluid ounces or ounces by weight? It's fluid ounces by, it's, it's, it's ounces by weight. 15 ounces by weight, 15 ounces by weight, okay. Um, cattle drive gold, can I ask you a question? Does the price end in a seven nine, seven nine or nine nine? Can you use it in a sentence? We gotta get that there cattle drive beef chili with bean. We gotta get that there, cattle drive chili with bean. Okay, eight cans, it's a family pack. 15 ounces, I'm gonna assume one can. See, this is not in my area of expertise, so I gotta think about it. I'm gonna say a can is a dollar and 60 cents. Times eight, takes this to roughly 12.99. Then I'm gonna say it's Costco, so we're gonna say 11.99. It's lower than that. I don't know what yellow lower means, but I don't think it's... It would take me to 10.99 then. Whoa! <laughs> the dude knows groceries, man. What can you say? This shit ain't even in my locally denominated currency. I was going off on Apollo too. It got me laughing. Let me, let me go find it here. I must have amnesia. I forgot that he's him. That's the thing. People assume I'm out of touch. I might be out of touch in my mojito discourse, but I'm not out of touch when it comes to grocery prices. I ain't ever used a grocery delivery service in my life. I'll tell you why. Because during COVID, everybody was using the grocery delivery services. And I was like, that seems amazing. Then I'm like, hey, I could use some groceries. I need them today. Earliest appointment, four days from now. Okay, you'll, you'll be seeing my masked ass at the grocery store then because you don't have the enough capacity in order to get me my delivered groceries when I actually need them. Okay, here we go. I said, Apollo. <clears throat> you ever play Costco? They show you a food and you guess how much it costs at Costco. He said, I don't shop at Costco. I'm only used to inflated Instacart prices. I said, come on, bro, go ahead, don't be cringe. Tell me how much four pounds of gala apples cost. I just wanted to hear his answer, man. I wanted to hear how much Apollo thought four pounds of apples cost. Because I think it could be the same sort of thing where he said, if you didn't say a huge number for this, you're stupid. And then he said that the moon was 6,000 Earths away from Earth. <laughs> Apollo, if you're here, by the way, it's all laughs. I do want to tell you one time I was playing one versus 100 on Xbox Live. And um, I, the question was, what is the closest star to the Earth? And I said, Alpha Centauri. Or I said like Beetlejuice or something like that. By the in case you're confused, the answer is the sun. The sun is the closest star to the Earth. <laughs> April 18th, 2003. I'm putting myself in the mindset I was in 10th grade. 10th grade, I was wearing a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt on top of it and boot cut jeans. It's in the 10th grade. Sony Pictures in April, pre-memorial day, but still made a lot of money. It's not gonna be Spider, maybe it is Spider-Man 2. Let me, let me see. Adam Sandler, probably not Spider-Man 2. Sony Pictures 2003, pre-anger management. Pre-longest yard. Maybe it is anger management now that I think about it. 2003, that's okay, it is anger management. Bad movie, by the way. Watch it again if you disagree. And if you still disagree after that, watch it again. Walt Disney 
16 million opening, 2003. What's crazy is this is kind of like the opening of uh, Wish in 2023. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Hey, oh, or whatever. Uh, genre, adventure, family, drama, comedy. Tagline, some secrets are too big to be kept hidden. Starring Shia LaBeouf, it's holes! Okay, never seen it, but tagline plus actor sorts me out on that one. I was getting a little nervous. Warner Brothers opens to 12 milli, starring Jamie Kennedy. This is Malibu's Most Wanted. That's a classic. If by classic you mean just absolutely horrible. <laughs> I watched... Um, about nine minutes of Kicking It Old School, by the way, which is a movie where uh, Jamie Kennedy, it's a lot, very similar to this, by the way, um, but Jamie Kennedy is like a break dancer in the 80s, and then somehow he gets like frozen in time. He, 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 he goes into a coma, and then 20 years later, he gets thawed out, but he still talks like he's from the 80s. It may genuinely be one of the most racist films I've ever seen that is not racist, like, to prove a point, like American History X. Like, it's just, like, it's just really... It, I don't think it's, like, a it didn't age well thing. I think it's, like, it never should have been made in the first place. <laughs> Somehow, out of these three, the one you haven't seen is Holes. Bro, Anger Management... Cross 100 milli domestic. Of course, I've seen anger management. Now, Malibu's most wanted. I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to say? I was 14 or 15 years old. I loved satire films, and uh, Eight Mile was like the biggest movie in history. This is like the, the scary movie to Eight Mile. But anyway, tagline Ever feel like you don't belong? It's crazy Warner Brothers made that. In its first weekend, it grossed eleven. It grossed eight million dollars, and then three million dollars, I guess, in tips, which is nice. Starring Chow Yun Fat. It could only be Bulletproof Monk. Starring Chow Yun Fat and Sean William Scott, aka Stifler. <laughs> A mysterious and immortal Tibetan Kung Fu master who spent the last 60 years traveling around the world protecting the ancient scroll of the ultimate mentors a selfish street kid in the ancient intricacies of Kung Fu. All right. I told you, I was in the 10th grade. It's all locked in my brain here. 20th Century Fox, third weekend, doing great in terms of holding over, much like the Paul Giamatti film, The Holdovers. Hey, by the way, I went through... Um, a crisis this weekend. Did you know Paul Giamatti was fucking 36 years old when he filmed Sideways? I saw it on Twitter and then I went to fact check it. I said, that seems wrong. That dude was not, they put some shit on him in that movie. <laughs> he was not 36 in that. He's going through a midlife crisis, man. I don't know what this, I'm not trying to insult Paul Giamatti. I'm just saying like, that's not what 36-year-olds look like these days, man. I'm pretty sure Chris Evans is like 44. This dude, that means he played uh, Harvey Corman when he was like 32. That's younger than I am. <laughs> he was playing like a 60-year-old man. They didn't live very long back then. Bitch, this was 2003! <laughs> that was... It's, we're still living in those years. I mean, things have changed, but not really that much. Like, like Paul Giamatti's still here. Okay, 20th Century Fox, starring Colin Farrell. This is The Recruits with Al Pacino. Oh, it's not. 20th Century Fox, Colin Farrell didn't crush at the box office. Like phone, well, we got lots of guests to burn. We should throw a phone booth in here just in case. Okay, it is phone booth. The only other thing I was thinking, holy fuck, we're in the 93rd percentile today. Oh, letterbox diamond users could never. 
Colin Farrell's easy because, like, in between 2002 and 2005, he was only in like five movies, and all of them are known: The Recruits, Minority Report, Phone Booth, Daredevil, and I, I don't know, maybe one more thing that I can't remember now. Then he went away for like five years, and then he was in In Bruges. Then he went away for another five years. And he came back and exclusively did Yorgos Lanthimos films. So if you see Colin Farrell as the top billed actor, it should narrow it down for you. If you have the year as well, you're in a great spot. Loki, though, Rizzler, listen, we're, you know what it's like? So I, I, again, I don't know if it was norovirus, but it was some kind of gastroenteritis I had on Saturday. I was half conscious the whole day. It was like having a, a horrible hangover plus a fever at the same time. And the only sentence that kept repeating through my brain was, you're so skibbity, you probably think this Riz is about you. It's just like what felt like 48 straight hours of, you're so skibbity, you probably think this Riz is about you. Like, you know, your brain just fixates on one sentence and you're like, stop it. And it's like, the more you tell it to stop it, the more it fixates on it. I was in purgatory, bro. Temporarily stumped. Pierce Brosnan. Tommy Lee Jones. Musical guest. Emily Blunt. Timothy Chalamet. Ed Norton. The bad guy rides a tricycle. Falls from grace. Second movie. Netflix original. Netflix original. First movie. can't fucking do it, man. Kate Blanchett. I, I gotta close my eyes. I, I'm just not seeing the board right. Let's refresh. D. Gauss. D. Gauss. Okay. What about movies that take place in Mexico? Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Coco, Sicario, Project X, American History X, Saw X. Saw, Saw 10 takes place in Mexico? Yes. The degaussing worked? Well, I think the first thing I saw when I degaussed was Once Upon a Time in Mexico. And I thought, you know what? What about Mexico? <laughs> Saw Diaz. That's the good Saw, right? Is there any other franchise where the 10th movie is considered maybe the best movie in the franchise? And please do not say The Land Before Time. One and 10 are the best ones. That's crazy, man. That's like Monkey Wrench by the Foo Fighters. One in 10! If you see in Saw, see one in 10. da na na da na na don't see any between them. That's not true. The 3D one is kind of fun at the very least. I'll take my points for that. By the way, hello, Josh. Hello. You Monday off, you motherfucker, you? Thanksgiving Monday? That's not a thing. Get back to work. I was sick of the whole internet being broken Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Get your damn... IT professionals back to work and, 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 and stop pushing updates the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, okay? You're just asking for trouble. And Josh, can you take something up with your politicians? Did you see that video of the lady at Target and the price tag says it's $649 and then she slides a yellow price tag on top of it that says Black Friday special, $649? They really think we're stupid out there. Guy who will believe anything he sees on social media with no context. They really think we're stupid. That being said, can I say something? I support uh, Target's right to do that. Because if you're the kind of person who sees something they don't need, but buys it because it's 20% off, you deserve to pay the price that you were going to pay. It's P.T. Barnum, a sucker 
is born every minute. Hi, Tomo. It's illegal? Good. Then arrest them. Otherwise, enjoy your full price Breville juicer. Tomo, I'm, every, I, I don't, I'm not an electrical guy, okay? Let me just slash marker this. Slash marker, that's dulls. Every time Tomo comes over here, I'm on a rug, by the way, just this, is, this matters for context. He, um, he starts rubbing his paws on the rug, and then I start hearing electrical noise in my headphones. And it only happens when he's over here. Like, am I about to be shocked to death? Because I feel like a shock to the ear is going to do some serious damage. Like, he's creating an electrical field around me right now. Did you see the streaker on Small World? Dude, I know I say this as somebody who's been uh, to Disney properties many times and will go again. First off, let's be honest, that guy was not a streaker. He did not strip naked for attention. That person was having a hallucinogenic drug-induced trip. He... Was he was baptizing himself in like the Taj Mahal pool on It's a Small World after all. He was just standing motionless next to the puppets and stuff like that. He was, he was freaking out. Like inside, he was like, ah! Ah! But uh, outwardly, he was just like... But then my favorite part of it was all the replies that were like, Big Brother facepalm gif, how to get banned from Disney properties for life. Lady... You think this guy cares about getting banned from Disney properties for life? He's seeing God right now. He's having tea with the devil. And you're like, he's never going to be able to go to Tokyo Disney Sea now. He, you and him aren't living in the same reality. This guy's brain just got exploded. He is not concerned about like... I'm not saying he's more enlightened. I'm just saying he's got bigger problems. But like... Disney adults will see a dude going through a psychic breakdown and be like, well, he's never going to be able to get on a Disney cruise. He's, he's in hell right now. He got dragged to hell like Alison Lohman. Okay, brother, you got you to gotta move, okay? You're, you're spoiling my focus here. Go up, go behind the monitor, buddy. I'm going to show you off then, okay? I'm going to show you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to pick you up again. It's just how it's going to go. We're, going to, we're all going to learn a valuable lesson here. Can you wave to the camera? Stop pushing on me. Stop pushing on me. And he's back. You're back. I'm picking you up again. Cheese. Okay, there you go. Don't, I'll pick you up again. I'm gonna pick you up again. I'm gonna turn you into a lap cat, Tomo. Look at, oh, what a nice boy. What a nice boy. brother yeah i wish this is why we need like a behind the scenes camera i put him he's like i gotta get away he jumps off of me then he immediately runs right next to my chair and sits there like they'll make anything into an auto battler slash deck builder these days and i am living for it this is lucky hero i stole this from dan I saw him playing it today. I didn't know what to play. I said, I will play this. Um, it is a slot machine auto battler. You spin, tuk -a -tuk -a -tuk -a -tuk -a -tuk you get symbols. You click on the symbols to get shield, do damage. You, spend, you get money. You use the money to buy more symbols, which makes you spin those symbols more often. There's synergies. You can remove symbols, etc., etc. Does one damage. 50% chance to deal one extra damage. 
All right, I understand. I'll tell you what. One energy to block two. Wooden sword did two damage, and then two extra damage as a result of my energy blade. It's that simple. Uh, I need more energy symbols, so I can use more symbols in a turn. That does make sense. That makes perfect sense. Uh, I'm going to go back to my store while we're here, and I'm going to purchase more energy symbols, which gives me more energy immediately. And then I'm just going to kill you, because I got the energy blade. I'm not messing with you. Maybe this is something, maybe this is just the tutorial. I watched Dan fight the vampire bat for like eight minutes. What's crazy is that he's such a good entertainer. While I was watching it, I was like, wow, this game's pretty hard. <laughs> now I'm like, what, what was he doing, man? Why didn't he just kill the, the vampire bat? You found a treasure chest. Select the reward. Miracle bomb, me when I'm Oppenheimer. I haven't seen Oppenheimer. I know Oppenheimer was... By the way, I'm not trying to say that the nuclear bomb was a net good for society. That's a complicated discussion topic. Um, there, Oppenheimer himself was tortured by his breathless ambition that left him no choice but to create the bomb to satisfy his own destiny, but also he had enough an emotional maturity to recognize that he might have been destroying the entire human race, right? But there must have been a dude in Oppie's corner who was like, bro, you did it, bro! You made the bomb! Bro, dude! Let's go celebrate! You made the bomb! This is a miracle! There must have been a dude with like no... Uh, reservations whatsoever, right? That was super stoked. That's literally how the movie goes. Maybe I don't have to see it. Almost everybody else in the movie and the country was like that. He did need a guy in the chair. That dude was the United States government. I'm gonna select two gold. I'm, I will not take a bomb, Oppenheimer. Sorry. Miracle. On use, add spikes to the surrounding shields. Tell you what, give me a basic experience book, munch on it, and then get the kill. Miracles aren't necessarily good. So true. What did Jesus do with the fish again? He walked on the water. He turned water into wine. What did he do with the fish? Did he turn the fish into bread or did he turn the bread into fish? He just multiplied them? Oh, but when Subway adds soy protein into the chicken so that one chicken breast can feed 20 people, all of a sudden there's a class action lawsuit? Make it make sense. By the way, I don't mean to spin this philosophically, but someone in the midst of all the plus twos, someone said, how can someone so intelligent be so dumb in video games? You know what social media has really illustrated for me? is something that I, I, this, if you were not alive in the 90s and the 2000s, basically, rich equaled smart. Unless you were a celebrity, in which case everyone assumed you were stupid until you were on Celebrity Jeopardy and people were like, holy cow, like, uh, you know, Jeff Probst got hands. But basically, until like 2010, it was basically like, if you're Bill Gates, he's the richest guy in the world, he must be the smartest man in the world. What we've learned on social media is that smart people in a way, you can get so smart in one narrow domain that it tricks you into thinking that you're smarter than everybody in every domain. Like, do you see the venture capitalists tweeting about world politics nonstop? Bro literally threw like 10 milli at Uber when it got started and now thinks like he should be the secretary general for the United Nations. You're no Boutros Boutros Galley, friend. You're no Boutros Boutros Galley. There's, you see it all the time. You see it not, I mean, you see it with streamers, of course. You know, streamers get really good at streaming, i.e. they have the most viewers. And then they start talking about shit that is like way beyond their purview. Start talking about the merits of white labeling goods for human consumption and stuff like that. Um, you, same thing, doctors, I feel like they get to the top of their 
intellectual weight class and all of a sudden every time they go into a business they're like this place is this never would have flown in med school and you're like brother this is a damn bakery you're out of your you really think you got you know how to make the bakery work better than the dude who's been running the bakery for 71 years what I'm trying to say is just because I sound smart because I'm good at talking doesn't mean I'm smart at all. I'm smart in a very, very narrow subset of trivia, I think essentially pop culture based trivia. What makes me smarter than the average genius is that I'm smart enough to know how stupid I am in other domains. But what drives me crazy is I was asking questions about like, can somebody explain to me how magnets work? And then like, 12-year-old kids are like, didn't you go to school? And then like 37-year-old PhD candidates in material science are like, we don't really know. We got to stop shaming people for asking questions, man. It's, we can make society better one question at a time. It is, people were blowing my mind conceptualizing gravity for me. When the person in the Discord said, what will really blow your mind is if the sun phased out of existence, the earth would still continue to orbit it for longer than it would take for us to be bathed in complete darkness because gravity travels slower than the speed of light. And I'm like, what do you, speak on that. What are you saying here? Gravity travels slower than the speed of light? That's crazy. They travel at the same speed? Well, here's the thing. Maybe I've misquoted them. They seem like they knew what they were talking about. But the other thing is, I, didn't, I never thought of gravity as traveling at all. I always thought gravity is just something that exists. Like if you put me, if you blinked me up to the troposphere, I guess it takes an infinitesimal amount of time for the physics to apply, for me to start being attracted down to the center of the earth. It doesn't just happen instantaneously. I get that instantaneous and infinitesimal are doing a lot of work here. It's crazy that, that gravity's not instant, bro. Gravity has to travel? You ever think gravity in the universe is like, are we there yet? But how does gravity travel? Because what is it? <laughs> like, what's traveling, bro? What's, yo, yo, Isaac Newton, what's traveling? What's traveling? When light's traveling, the photons are traveling. But when gravity's traveling, what's traveling, bro? Me watching a modern NBA game, what's traveling? So true. Me asking a question about basic NBA rules to a 2023 National Basketball Association referee. Brother, I just blow the whistle when Joel Embiid flops, okay? Don't ask me about the rule book. I don't really know ball, just for the record. I'm not trying to put Joel Embiid on, <laughs> on blast. Anytime I see like a, a clip of someone and then everyone in the comments is like, look at this flop. I'm always like, I don't know, bro. I think I would have gone down like that too. Like a dude will be standing still and then he'll catch an elbow to the side of the head and fall backwards. Everyone's like, look at this flop job. I'm like, I think you'd catch me doing exactly this. I'm not a professional athlete, but like, you know what, if you're like outside on a summer's day and then all of a sudden in your ear, you just hear, you go like, whoa, what the hell? The, the B is like, oh, look at this theater. Whoa, and the Oscar goes to, I'm like, no, bro. I'm surprised I didn't expect something to be so close to my brain. I, um, I meant what I said when I said it in the Discord this weekend, it's crazy to think that if you took a Final Fantasy XIV static leader and you made them the commander of the Union forces in 1861, that shit's over by Christmas. No disrespect to Ulysses S. Grant and Stonewall Jackson, but like, I completely believe the people who are running their Final Fantasy XIV raids, like the Navy, would absolutely destroy the Confederate army in like six months. As long as they can get their comms out there and everybody looks at the US Civil War drawings that resemble shit posts. You should have tweeted that. Ah, it's not worth it. I'd rather just say it in an environment where people are predisposed to already plus to it <laughs> rather than have to deal with the blowback.
Can I just say, has anybody here run a garage sale in the past like 10 years? I used to love garage sales when I was a kid, going to them. Um, I, this is a very Chibli core story, but I even tried to, I lived way out in the woods. Um, I lived in the country. I took some of my Goosebumps books and toys I didn't want, and I put them on a table at the end of my driveway in rural Ontario and put a sign up that said garage sale and like four cars drove by the entire afternoon and none of them stopped. Anyway, I feel like running a garage sale has to be like annoying as fuck in the modern day. And I, part of it might be like, you know, people just look up your shit on eBay and then offer you like nothing for it. But then the other part of it is don't people come and linger for like 20 minutes and then they buy like one mug for a dollar? Like, I'd rather just throw it all in a big trash bag and take it to the dump and save you, like, a whole afternoon. That seems annoying as hell. Sometimes people show up and clear it all out. I mean, that's the dream, right? Just donate it? Listen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. When it comes to stuff, you know, mugs, decorative glasses, stuff like that, if you're... If you're feeling morally superior because you're giving it to the Salvation Army instead of throwing it out, you're just offloading the vomit. There's the vomit? <laughs> you're offloading the garbage on the other people. Clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as your clothes are clean, for sure. But if you're giving them a garbage bag full of trinkets and baubles and you're like, I'm a better person, nah, man. Well, in a way, at least they're doing something with the... Like, they probably have a better workflow for the garbage than you do, but still. We go buy that shit all the time. No, 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 no. You, you only see the mugs that get put out. That's all I'm saying. When you go to Salvation Army, they got eight mugs on the shelf. You didn't see the 800 that they threw in the trash can that were, you know, not for broadcast. Vicky Cristina Barcelona. What about Vicky Cristina Barcelona? I saw Vicky Cristina Barcelona in theaters. I am not bragging, just to be clear. <laughs> Why? Um, a friend of mine worked at a store that got tickets to the local, not the real, but the local premiere of Vicky Cristina Barcelona. So she said, hey, you're the biggest nerd I know. You want to go see this Woody Allen movie? circa 2008, when he should have already been canceled, but canceling kind of didn't exist back then. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Canceling existed back then. Well, yeah, but not for like crimes. Like you could do like a crime. And as long as your movies were good, you could like make it back. But if you dared like say you don't like the president when you're on stage at the Grammys, then you get like blacklisted from the industry forever for some reason. Like, it was a little, it was messed up back then. It was different. What about Kramer? Okay, but like, that was really bad. That one. <laughs> you could, st okay, okay, I guess that's an edge case. You could still get canceled, but you really had to work for it back then. <laughs> you had to get caught on video doing something absolutely horrible. I can't even open the gram anymore. It's all thirst traps. I don't know where that came from, but that's very funny. You know what's crazy to me is the, the OnlyFans bot network on Twitter now, where like no matter what a tweet is, like it could be about like, Ridley Scott responds to criticism of his new film, Napoleon. The top comment is always like the same account that's like, I dated Ridley in high school. He was mid to be honest. No, you didn't. Anastasia? You're not a real, you're a damn robot. Scientists at NASA have discovered a new supernova located in the Betelgeuse galaxy. Mm, my hole is bigger for real. No, it isn't. It's, this is 3,500 light years across Anastasia. It's, it's a trillion times larger than, than Earth. It doesn't even make any sense. And then it's, it's, in every single reply to every single viral tweet. This dude clicks a button then immediately forgets what it does. Don't care, didn't ask. Plus your name is Dark Shadow Rogue with Dark Shadow and Rogue all starting with capital letters. 
Pascal case, ass non sub, 1997 ass username, Dungeons and Dragons master. I'm sorry. Really? That's all it takes? The only thing that would get you to stop being mean is for someone to make fun of you a little bit. You apologize immediately. That's a weak, bro. That's crazy. You're a people pleaser. That's sadder than anything that I'm doing in fucking... I don't even remember what the game is called. Slot Machine Andy? You gotta double down. You absolutely have to double down. You have to say whatever you say I am. That's what I'm not. You can't be mean and also submissive. Well, I guess you can. That would make you a brat, right? That's kind of like... I think that's a sub-community. I don't know about all the political compasses and, and what kind of terms apply to all of them, but... I'll just tell you one thing, as a 34-year-old man, you would not catch me being bratty, okay? Toxic, maybe. Cynical, sure. Stoic, perhaps. Please stop talking. Hey, Apollo, why don't you stop watching and go look up how many furlongs away the moon is from the Earth, you fucking hoser. Dude legitimately said, if you didn't put down a large number for this, you're stupid. Answer was like 19, he put down 6,000. Bro read that right out of the script he wrote two days ago. I was talking about it earlier in this stream, but then I did also say, just to make you feel better, um, one time I was playing one versus a hundred on Xbox Live, and I said the closest sun to the earth was, the, the closest star to the earth was not the sun. So I'm just saying it happens to everybody. I'm glad we could all enjoy this humor with one another. It's starting to get static to you again. Tobo, you're, 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 you're shocking me, buddy. You're shocking me. Tomo, you're, you're going crazy, man. Are you hearing the static or is it just me? To Tomo, you gotta go. You gotta, bro you gotta go, brother. It's getting crazy. This is like you're turning this into... It's like when Storm shows up in the X-Men. You gotta get out of here. What's the, what's the dire wolf, wolf called that um, Arya Stark has to cyber bully to get it to leave Winterfell? Nosebleed? Something like that? Get out of here, nosebleed. Nymeria. Bro, what if Nymeria comes back in the battle for Winterfell? Oh, the showrunners kind of forgot about Nymeria, didn't they? Oh, well, nevertheless, Tomo, don't go into the cords, man. I'm trying to avoid, like, an electrical storm here. I just hope... George R. R. Martin finishes the books before he dies? Bro, if I was George R. R. Martin, I would never write a, another fucking word. Honestly. People are like, George R. R. Martin, I love your books. I got a tattoo of like some lore on my shoulder. By the way, please finish the books before you die and fade into ether for eternity. I'd be like, bro, fuck you, man. I already gave you like 27 years of my life locked in my office. You just come say some disrespectful shit online like... Well, he doesn't really take care of himself, so I just hope he finishes it before he has a heart attack. You fucking asshole. You'd never catch me putting pen to page ever again. You people just don't deserve it. You're not being respectful. The dude's out here living his life instead of writing like another 900 pages of like middle-aged Lord of the Rings. You could catch me doing exactly the same thing. He should do Elden Ring again. I love that green text though. That is like, um... Wait, hang on. We paid him millions for it? No, you didn't. You paid, fucking, you probably paid him like eight bucks. You pirated the other 20 books. You bought one of them on Black Friday at Barnes & Noble. What do you mean you paid? You didn't do shit, buddy. HBO made him a millionaire. Your ass got a library card. Don't flatter yourself. Ohio ass comment. Please tell me the green text. Oh, the green text, sorry. It is, um, picture of Elden Ring. George R. R. Martin wrote the story. Game comes out, there is no story. Is this a joke? And then all the comments are like 14-year-old kids raised on video essays. I forgot that we live in an era now where a story has to be spoon-fed to you instead of you piecing it together inch by terrible inch by reading the item description on a pack of gum that you found on the ground in an optional area that you had to get a lore item and then use on a painting in order to visit. I love that shit though. Me too, but let's not pretend that it's like, you know. Listen, it's not J.R.R. Tolkien. I dig the vibe. You hate story? 
No, wrong. I hate video game story most of the time. I love stories. Read them every night. To my toddler, that's what they're there for. What is P's name? His name is Carlor. And he can fuck anything. And he will and has. You need to get with him because I don't have a penis. It looks like someone glued an acorn to the bottom of my torso. Oh wait, please? Lies of please? What, that's not the right weapon! Why would it, it's not, it doesn't even, didn't it say adjacent instead of surrounding? That shit was surrounding, not adjacent. You can't enhance something more than once? Then why does it have a parentheses plus one? Dark Sprite, what I order from McDonald's when I forget what a Coca-Cola is. You know what, a plus two then. You had to jump through some hoops to get there, but you got there. Go ahead, kill me if you got the stones. It was a good attempt. That was a uh, lucky hero. Not really an auto battler, but definitely a roguelite. They got me looking like General Zhukov out here. Are you seeing this? That's certainly a lot. How about slash marker me? Call that lucky hero. I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'll be back in two minutes. Nothing drives me crazier, by the way. Same motherfuckers who are like, how is this guy so dumb? You gotta use your, you put your Gleeb Glob on top of your Gloob Glob, then you use the furnace on the sword, and if it hits the sword, then you use the reroll that goes a Gleeb Gloob, Glob Gloob, Glob Gloob. And then I make a reference to the most decorated Soviet general of the Second World War, and they go, literally who? Put down the manga, okay? And pick up a podcast. It's time to learn something. This shit's getting ridiculous, man. I was poison.com. Burger King, Imer, Rajasthan, India. I ordered food from Burger King and they sent me burnt and bad smelling food and after eating that I had vomit. <laughs> How did you find that so fast? That's actually troubling. Also, can if you click on librarian's link there, can you tell me what we're looking at here? It I like a texture textured vegetable protein patty but it also has like a little bit of a like a dorito on top of it or something <laughs> i don't know what's what's going on there it's a pretty cursed image i was reading a lot of i was poison.com this weekend for reasons i thought there was some <laughs> this dude the one from ontario was so good <laughs> Ben and Jerry, tonight's dough, real Canadian superstore, Parkdale Avenue, Brockville, Ontario, Canada. I only ate maybe a quarter, but was looking for the cookie dough pieces. Only found the peanut butter ones, and it tasted really wrong, but I kept looking for cookie. Who among us has not found themselves in that circumstance? It tasted really wrong, but I kept looking for cookie. I felt sick and gave up immediately and soon went to bed. Next morning, 7 a.m., horrible stomach pain. I was curled up the entire day, puking every 30 minutes to an hour. Nauseous, no ability to drink, no effort to eat. Puking eased up around 9 p.m., slow moving, managed to eat once that night. Little sips all day, mostly burps, no pukes. Next morning, stomach pain, coughing right onto the edge until I puked. Now, fourth morning, I'm still slightly nauseous. Feels like I might have one more puke later. <laughs> oh, man. I just, the expression is so good. I only ate maybe one quarter, but was looking for cookie dough pieces, only found peanut butter ones, and it tasted really wrong, but I kept looking for cookie. All right, did you see this one too? This one's so good. Taco Bell, Newport Beach, California. Suspected source, Mexican pizza and two Taco Bell Supremes. I doubled over at work and had to lay down on the ground. I had to call someone to come pick me up because I couldn't drive. Once I got home, I rested for two hours and had scary diarrhea. But then the pictures that they included, they licked the shit clean, bro. Like the box doesn't even have any sauce left in it. The, the boxes are completely empty and like you could reuse them and give them to the next customer. It, I know we've been through this before. The one that always gets me, man, is like... Wendy's raw chicken sandwich. They're like, Wendy served me a raw chicken sandwich and then they ate like 80% of it. How does that happen? Just stop eating. 
If I, if I bit into raw, I know I'm not the guy who's great at avoiding food poisoning. I'm just saying. If I knew the chicken was raw, I would have stopped eating it. Let me close that. Open this. So we're just going to play some sap to finish us off today. I think we're playing Lethal Company tomorrow. I got to work tomorrow? Yeah, me too. It's funny, you put work in quotation marks. But when I'm three minutes late, aka seven minutes early, and then um, I tweeted about being sick on the weekend, people, they've changed their tune quite a lot. Is he, is he live today? Is he live today? Oh, I hope he's okay. Being a streamer is, is fucked up for so many reasons. I don't know if you go through this, Dan. I didn't even want to tweet that I was sick. The only reason I did it was because Librarian outed me. The, here's the, how the process went. I needed, I had an obligation to tell the Peloton sub-community that I wasn't going to be there on Sunday because I'm the person who makes the stack. So I told them, hey, I can't be there tomorrow. I've got some kind of gut-based infection. Librarian, who pays 14 bucks a month to Peloton despite having never worked out on the fucking thing in his life, screen caps that and puts like an image for a PTSD... Uh, imbued soldier on Twitter, so now like a hundred thousand people see it. Then, I, this is why it sucks to be a streamer and tell people you're sick. You only get two kinds of messages. One of the kinds of message is, they're both equally fucked up. People are like, oh my god, we love you, get well soon, this is terrible, I hope you're okay, rest as long as you need. And I'm like, I know, I've been through it before, don't worry, it's just diarrhea, like we'll, we go again. Then the other kind of message is like, what the fuck did you eat, brother? Holy, your immune system must be totally fucking shellacked, you dummy. And I'm like, I don't know who you are, dude. It's the, the highest highs and the lowest lows, man. I got people that are like, it's raining outside and they're like, make sure you take an umbrella and endeavor not to get struck by lightning. We love you. And the other one is like, it wouldn't be me, Vancouverite, complaining about rain. Like, it's just, it's toxic positivity and toxic negativity as far as the, just, just, we gotta, we gotta control ourselves a little bit. We gotta stay within the range of normalcy for human beings, bro. We need toxic neutrality. Exactly. Whether he lives or dies, it's up to him. That's the reaction I'm looking for. Listen. VIP Daniel, it's because I respect you that I'm going to click on Say Business, okay? Oh, I've seen this one! Tomate, patate, clémentine, c'est le business. C'est le business. C'est le business. C'est le business. Viens de pâte, mec. Viens de pâte, mec. Oh! Bougez de là, putain de merde. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's just something about French, huh? Because it has heavy, like, um, Pennywise versus Joker energy for a number of reasons, but one of them is definitely that it's, that it's French. Say business. I do love when he's, when he's rolling. <clears throat> I took steroids earlier and I am zooming, bro. No, you didn't. You did not take steroids earlier. You've been here since the start of stream. You are role-playing, being addictive, addicted to a non-habit-forming narcotic. Is this what you pictured for yourself as a little kid? <laughs> when you thought about what life was going to be like as an adult? Oh, it's for, it's for my asthma? Maybe you did take steroids. Maybe you are Zooming. Never mind. All that messed up stuff that I said, I'd like to apologize. You got me on that one. You kind of cooked with that one. But you know what they say, say business. You got to double down. I'm not a double downer. I'm more the kind of guy who's like, if I make a mistake, I'm like, I'm sorry. I know we're a dying breed. What do you think about the idea that chats reflect their streamers? Um, I think that that's a way for 28 year olds watching me to avoid having any agency in their own lives. So they can just type messed up stuff. And then when I'm like, hey, you should be nicer. They're like, well, I'm only mean because of you. And I'm like, brother, I don't even know who the heck you are. You're probably mean because you grew up in Ohio. And I have sympathy for that. But at the same time, don't, don't put that on me. My ass in a completely different country, just minding my own business. <laughs> minding my own sib business. 
Look at like this is what is it's crazy to be a streamer, man. I'm just I just turn three in super auto pets. People are coming at me with with loaded like Bill Maher ass questions. And you know who the real victim is? All the hardworking people of Ohio that don't yet have broadband internet. So they don't even know that they're being attacked right now. And their weekend was already hard enough losing to the University of Michigan for the third time in a row. Like they're going through it right now, man. Not to mention the, the Bengals lost to the Stillers of all teams. Burrow is out, man. I know he messed up all my parlays. Who's the QB for the Stillers? Kenny motherfucking Pickett? What, you think I'm stupid? You really think you would just, I would come up here and start telling lies and anecdotes about shit that I don't understand? You think I don't know who Kenny Pickett is? He's like the 24th best starting QB in the NFL right now. Now, who's number two? I don't know, fucking probably, well, I mean, Mahomes has got to be number one just on aggregate, but you probably got to say Lamar Jackson's number two right now, right? Right? Dak Prescott? Listen, we're talking about regular season and playoffs, okay? Not just regular season. What about Jalen Hurts? I forgot that guy existed. He's really good, too. Okay, you got me on that one. Maybe that bumps, maybe that bumps him down to number three. See, I didn't double down. If I was going to double down, I would have said, oh, I prefer quarterbacks who throw the ball. He had three throwing touchdowns. Yeah, I know, but he had two rushing touchdowns too. So when you minus one from the other, his ratio is all messed up. Tommy DeVito, bro, some of you guys are cool. Do not look at the New York Giants stats this year. Brother, they are ass. <laughs> not as ass as the Patriots. Whom they beat on Sunday, by the way. What can I say? Egg nose ball. How do you feel about the Buffalo Bills? Here's how I feel about the Buffalo Bills, bro. Why the hell Josh Allen running out the clock to send the game to OT when he's 06 lifetime in overtime? Dude legit couldn't have just tried to push it into field goal range to seal the deal? His clutch stat is like a negative 36, bro. How do you know all this? I was sick on Saturday and a little bit on Sunday, so I was watching some TV. You think I didn't see Michael Penix Jr. throwing Hail Marys into the end zone when he's in field goal range, 24-24 in the Apple Cup? Bro's literally trying to throw the game and his Heisman chances away for no reason when he could have just passed the ball to the halfback? What's he doing? Like, holy, it was so painful. Thank you. And then people are like, Penix Jr. doesn't make the play calls. Bro, if your OC is out here telling you to throw into double coverage with 36 seconds on the clock when you're in field goal range in a tie game in the fourth quarter, that's when you become the leader of men. And you say, we're not doing that shit. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to hand the ball off to the running back and just send them up the gut. We literally don't even need to gain yards. Just duct tape the ball to your chest. Also, I saw some bait in the chat, but I chose to respond to it. I didn't get baited into responding to it. I chose to respond to it. They said, NL, why do you think it's okay to have a fake Christmas tree? My family owns a tree farm, and I think that's messed up. It's because fake plants are actually awesome. I never realized until we got fake plants, but they're great. They look like real plants, they give out the same vibe as real plants. They are not toxic to your pets, which every real plant on earth is. They don't need to be watered. They don't shed needles or leaves all over the place. You don't need to chop down a real tree, make the environment worse just to, just to have a, a little organic life on display. I'm not anti-real plant. I'm just saying the, the fake plants are great too. Plastic is good for the environment? Well, I don't know. We got one plastic Christmas tree. What's worse? One plastic Christmas tree or chopping down 60 evergreen trees for like a lifetime's worth of Christmases? I, don't, I honestly don't know. I'd have to look at the, the thermodynamics of that one. One plastic Christmas tree? You're ass loading diesel into your Mercedes SUV to drive 30 minutes to the tree farm? I'm an environmentalist. I'm an environmentalist. Shut the fuck up. Your ass getting on me for having uh, one plastic tree behind me and going on a Disney cruise. Meanwhile, it's your honeymoon. You go to Japan. Oh, the CO2 doesn't matter. It's just CO2. Urgh. CO2 on a trip to Japan. Bad chest.
They're fucking us all, brother. We're not fucking each other. They're fucking us, okay? Just keep a real tree outside and bring it in once a year. Brother, you think I got 450 foot tall ceilings? I live in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not bringing a tree inside of my, a living tree inside of my fucking house. Are you stupid? <laughs> Digging a 30 foot hole in the ground and replanting the fucking root system. You've lost your damn mind. A tree inside of the house? What do you think this is? The Firefighters Clubhouse on the Netflix reality TV program, Siren Survive the Island? Hey, by the way, Malf, I had a question for you because you're my plant guy. I know you love hearing the questions, so I don't, I don't want people to suggest that Malf's not going to enjoy hearing this, okay? We have a, a maple tree in our backyard. I don't know how old it is. It's nine feet tall. It's definitely not at full mapling yet like it's not 30 feet tall with huge leaves and stuff like that like it's still maybe it's a teenage maple tree everybody that saw it said you guys gotta cut that down asap because apparently maple trees are great at um sucking resources out of the soil and thus making the rest of the soil inhospitable for other plants tell them and i quote fuck off I'm not going to tell my in-laws to fuck off, but can I get maybe some reasoning? By the way, I love the answer. I love where your head's at because I don't want to go through the trouble of getting rid of this tree either. All trees suck up resources. Should I cut down all trees or no trees is what I'm trying to say. None. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Leave the tree. All right, I'm going to leave the tree, and when it starts leaching the soil, I'm going to concrete over the rest of my backyard and turn it into a basketball court. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Come on with this. He's crazy. She's here! I was hoping she was doing my sick day routine of uh, watching all the Home Alone movies. My mind's so off the hinges, I believe you. That's why I'm going to let you go. You got three seconds to get your sorry two time in four flush keister off my property. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. So good. One, two, ten. Ah! Not gonna lie, Buzz is up there. Buzz a piece of crap, man, for real. You just start a Home Alone 2, he puts the candles behind Macaulay Culkin's ears. Everybody starts laughing at him. Macaulay Culkin gets... Obviously, Macaulay Culkin's gonna get traumatized. He's, doing, he's singing a solo in the choir, and everybody starts laughing at him. The kid's like eight years old. He turns around and pushes him a little bit. Then all the kids fall over. It's, he didn't pack the bleachers like that. That's the gym teacher, bro. He should be nicer to his little brother. In real life, nobody would have laughed. That's exactly true. In real life, the people would have been like, what's he doing with the candles, man? How's the gut doing? Dio Guigo! Dio Guigo, welcome back! I'm okay. I think I'm going to be good to go on the Peloton tomorrow. Was it overindulgence during the holidays? No, nah, bro. I'm straight edge. I literally don't know what gave me the disease. There's a few options, okay? By the way, you're gonna, your own bias is going to determine what you think it was, okay? Because there's no way to run a reverse uh, three prime to five prime direction RNA transflimerase on this via a stool sample. Here's the current hypotheses, okay? Friday night, we ordered pizza. I got a salad from the pizza place. Could it have been salad from the pizza place? Possibly. Friday at the daycare, there was a, a kid's birthday party, and one of the parents made cake pops. My kid, I brought the cake pop home for her. She said, I don't want this. I said, let's go. I ate it. Was it the homemade cake pop? I don't know if they're washing their hands when they're making the cake pop or using old eggs or something like that. Um, Ruka left a very virulent 
bowel movement in the litter box. Is it possible while I was scooping it, it got vaporous, made it into the, the lungs or into the mouth and thus entered the digestive tract? Anything's possible. Or could it have just been a little norovirus that started a few days earlier at the daycare and finally filtered over to me? I don't know. I'm going with pizza place salad. I know that this is stupid, but it's no stupider than you saying this is what caused it without actually knowing, because you're just guessing. My bias, my bias, this is not fact-based. My bias is that I always assume food poisoning is more likely to come from home cooking of any sort than from food from a kitchen that actually is required to maintain health standards to the point where the health department could shut them down if they ever don't have like the perfect water temperature or like uh, they've got too many rats in the kitchen. So I'm, I don't know what the answer is, obviously. My bias is the cake pop, but then it's confusing because Kate got it after me. She did not eat the cake pop but maybe I got the virus from the cake pop and then I cultivated it and then some virons made it into her ecosystem. Or maybe she's got something completely different. This is why every house needs a doctor, honestly. Cause like people are like, oh, what's wrong with you? And the only honest answer is like 99% of the time, you just gotta say, I don't fucking know, I'm not a doctor. How do I know what caused it? You want, you're like, if, if I went to the ER, you would, go, you would kick the shit out of me. You would be like, what are you doing in the ER? There's people here with real problems. And then like a day later, they'll be like, what exact strain of bacteria gave you those symptoms? And I'm like, I don't know, brother. You won't see me. Doesn't make any damn sense. My wife's a doctor and she tells me she doesn't know. That's how you know your wife is a good doctor. I feel like the, the smarter a doctor is, the more they should be like, we don't know what's going on. Like you ever look, I had gastroenteritis, right? Nausea, stomach cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, a little bit of uh, pain in the abdomen, uh, low grade fever, some, you know, uh, headache. That's the differential diagnosis for like those six symptoms is like 900 different problems. There's no way they could know. Isn't that what being a doctor is? You just kind of, you group them together and you're like one medicine would take out 70% of the things. And then if that doesn't work, come back. You obviously didn't have that. I was convinced that my kidneys were failing. For, I was like, I either have food poisoning or I'm going to die because my kidneys are failing. There should be a streamer doctor who's like, anytime you get sick, you could just, dude, we got to come on. Now we got a few thousand people watching this, right? Dr. K, Dr. K is for the mental, though. I mean, for the physical. Here's the thing. It's like, I'm, I'm so stoked that there's more of a focus on mental health now. Mental health is real. That's great. But now we need some of the fucking psychiatrists to now put more of a priority on the physical health. Because I think we're neglecting that a little bit. We need more capacity for physical health. Physical health is real health. I want to have like a doctor that I can just call up on Discord and I could be like, take a look at this stool sample. Am I going to die? But I know because the doctors are so responsible, they would look at this shit and then they would be like, I don't know, brother, go to the emergency room. And I'd be like, man, fuck you. What do I keep you around for? Go to the emergency room, ass. Just tell me what's wrong with me, dickhead. Fuck ass. I could tell myself to go to the emergency room. Talk to, go, why don't you call your doctor? You know why I'm not calling my doctor. Don't get me started on the telehealth. A lot of these are pandemic hangovers. But Kate, I always talk about this. You remember when like one day our daughters, like around her eye just turned super red and we were freaking out because she's like one year old. So we're like, she's probably allergic to something and she's gonna die. Um, so it's like step one is like, are we going to go to the emergency room for a little redness around the eye? I don't know. That's like a 14 hour trip at that time. Cause it's a 30 minute drive to the hospital, two hours to get somebody to talk to you. And then 10 hours of sitting in a chair waiting to be seen by a doctor. So we said, no, 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 let's call 811 first. 811 is the nurse's hotline. 
So I said, yeah, let, that's a good idea. Let's do that first. Called 811. They said, it'll be two hours till a nurse can talk to you. Left it on speakerphone on hold. Talked to the nurse. She said, unfortunately, without us being able to see it, all we can really do is recommend going to the emergency room. Thanks a lot. That's a good... But at that point, I wish that we had gone to the emergency room two hours earlier instead of waiting around for that useless information. So I said, I don't know. Let's finally try one of these like telehealth apps. And then uh, I, I did a telehealth with like the Telus Health. And then I talked to a doctor who might have just been chat GPT. And he's like, can you send me a picture? I sent a picture of the eye and they're like, unfortunately, without like a physical examination, we can't tell what this is. You should go to the emergency room. I was like, you are fucking useless. No disrespect. Literally every telehealth appointment is like, just go see a real doctor. Why do you exist? Anyway, by that point, the swelling had gone down. So like, no big deal, I guess. It was just kind of annoying. Telehealth only exists to get drugs. I was kind of losing it when I said that I might have food poisoning in the Peloton sub community. And then people were like, someone in there was like, I buy antibiotics. I'm not a prepper at all, by the way. But they said, I buy antibiotics from this website and they ship them from India to America and I keep it in my bug out bag. And I was like, hold on now, speak on that for a minute. <laughs> For legal purposes, don't tell me whether or not that's illegal. Is that a thing you can do? Then also somebody said, if you don't want to do that, you can just get fish antibiotics. Are you telling me that the fish get antibiotics without needing a diagnosis, but a human being has to prove that they're really sick to get the antibiotics, and it's the same antibiotics? I, everybody is doing their best, okay? I recognize that. But I think like once every 50 years, somebody needs to come into like all these, because these systems are like you build, you build, bureaucracy, you build, rework, you build. But then like after 50 years, there's like a lot of cruft and some like contradictory processes start to come into play. You need just one person to come in every 50 years and be like, does it seem right that the fish are getting better medical treatment than the people? Mm. That's just, yeah, then it's, okay, and then all of a sudden you can get ciprofloxacin at the pharmacy. That's all I'm saying. It's almost like antibiotic resistance exists. Yeah, but I would rather die to the antibiotic resistant super bacteria than die to some shitty bacteria that isn't resistant to the antibiotics that's killing my ass right now. I got to get rid of the thing that's killing me first before I can worry about not dying to the thing that might kill us later. That kills us too, dickhead? Okay, well, don't fucking give any antibiotics to the damn fish then. Or the chickens, for that matter. Don't even get me started finding out it's hard to get ciprofloxacin because 99% of the world's cipro goes to the, uh, the poultry arm of the animal husbandry guild. We got to start p treating people with more respect, man. Any legislators in chat? My local member of parliament be like, <laughs> best I could do is a $20 save on foods gift card, brother. It's hard out here. It would suck to be a legislator, for sure. I think you're right. Like, if I ever saw a politician that had jurisdiction over me in public, I would be airing my grievances, like, immediately. <laughs> I would be like, come on, man. This is... It's crazy out there. I, they, would, they would probably be like, I know, I saw the Salmonella and Campolo back there, it's super cut. I know. And I'd be like, no, you don't know here. You didn't... That's only the stuff that I said on stream, motherfucker. Get ready. Does this make sense to you? And then, yes, yeah, I know the fish get the antibiotics. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's good to buy my medicine at the PetSmart, brother? Now, it's not even a local pet store. It's an international chain. No, we don't think it's good. We don't think it's good. We're still running the pilot project on whether you should be able to consume one can of beer in the park. Sorry, it's, it's taking a little longer than we expect. Man, fuck you. Are you saying I shouldn't vote? No, you should always vote, but you should disabuse yourself from the notion that it's going to enact realistic change. You should do it. It's like taking a multivitamin, you know? You're like, the science says that I have to do this. It can't be bad for me. But if you expect that it's going to like completely make your life do a 180, 
you're putting a lot of pressure on like one little tablet, you know? The science is still out on the multivitamins. Nah, bro, I take them every day. And I'm kind of a bastion of health as long as we're talking about cycling output instead of gastrointestinal health. Your ass is sick every week. I'm actually, this fall, I've been anti-sick. We were even talking about it in the Peloton. So people were putting scientific literature out there that's like cardiovascular exercise apparently is like a deterrent to respiratory illness. I was, I've been cruising. And fuck you. I got sick on the weekend. I got sick on my time, motherfucker. What are you complaining about? I was here at 9.06 a.m. Monday morning. You can suck me as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm here for, I'm sitting in my damn office. It's none of your damn business. If anybody should be mad that I was sick, it's my wife, who on Saturday was like, I got to do all this stuff for the weekend. I got to take care of the house. I got to take care of the kid. I got to take care of the food. I got to do Meanwhile, my ass was like in the, you know, I was in a fugue state. Me being sick on my time is none of your business. That's the librarian's business. Because they outed me. I'm not, it's out of respect for the librarian. I'm not bringing up their tweet on Friday. They walked it back. That's the important part. <laughs> I'm just confused, okay? You don't need, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. Your wife bullies you more than you bully her? Yes, it's true. And that's the way that it should be. Men should not be rude to women. But it's funny when women are rude to men, as long as they're, they have rapport with one another. Go ahead, kill me on stream. No, because it's the, basically, here's the reason that I didn't even talk about. I had to, I had to cook you on Twitter, because otherwise, basically, you made a tweet that was like, explain this joke to me. I don't like explaining my jokes, because it's cringe. Not to be like, this is why something is funny and you should have laughed, but because it goes way too deep into the, the like, oh, comedians are modern philosophers. Look at the amount of small batch handcrafted work that went into this delightful little one sentence that reveals something about the hypocrisy of our society. Like my ass is not going to study. I, I was happy to look in the replies and let other people explain the nuances of the joke to you so I didn't have to do it myself. That, that saved me a lot of grief, I think. I was so sick this weekend, I watched an entire two and a half minute long video of a man doing landscaping, which is something that I have not done in my entire life. I found myself on Reddit and it was like r slash oddly satisfying. It was SB mowing, yes. <laughs> it was like man does insane amount of lawn work for somebody. The guy goes like up to the door and knocks on the door and is like, hey, I run a YouTube channel where I like to edge up people's sidewalks and take care of their stuff. It looks a little overgrown here. Do you mind if I do it for you? And I watched, he, he worked on it for like the whole day. Cleaned up the lawn. It looks super nice. I was like, man, this guy's amazing. You want to come see what it looks like? Sure. I didn't think it'd take me that long. But... <laughs> I, was, I was like, man, I still hear him. I don't think he had any idea this would be this hard. All right. Have a Did good a one. Fantastic job. Thank, Thank you. you. All the top comments. Wow, that lady really seemed ungrateful for the amount of labor that the dude put in. I mean, I would have at least, I was pretty unsatisfied with how grateful she was for the labor that the dude put. Can you just be normal, bro? What's wrong with you? The dude put in 16 hours of labor for the vine and for the love of the game. And then people were like, I hate the person that he did a favor for. Just relax, she's just, if someone came to my house and was like, can I do a favor for you? My ass would be a little hesitant too. I would be a little confused. That's like something that doesn't happen all that often. People gotta relax a little bit on the internet, man. My ass would say no thank you. I would also say no thank you, but not because I'm scared. I would say no thank you because he's stealing my yard work from me and I get a weird Protestant sense of purpose from doing it myself. I'd be like, you're not stealing my dopamine. SB mowing, That's, that shit gets me out of the house. 
I'm so fucked up when I saw the video, I was like, man, I should start a landscaping company. No the fuck I shouldn't. What are you talking about? I should start a landscaping company. If I ever did that shit for a stranger and they weren't thankful enough, my ass would be selling the truck the next day. I'd be like, no shot. I'd be like, man, fuck you. Dickhead doctor. I did all this landscaping for you. You can't even give me some fish medicine. Piece of crap. I also realized, you know what is true about the internet? Or at least true for a subset of the internet? I'll tell you what illuminated this for me. And we'll, we'll spin a little yarn here. There was a tweet that went viral, and then it went viral on Echo. The tweet was, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm, I know librarian's going to have it good to go, like immediately. What is Echo? Well, like sometimes things go viral, and then the quote tweet of them goes viral as well. So it goes viral on its own merits, and then it goes viral as a dunk. You know, it's like when you get an N1 in basketball. Like it scores, but then also there was a foul. Anyway. It was a top-down image of a service dog that said it was basically like a situation that may or may not have actually happened. Uh, Three-year-old walked up to my service dog. I, got, I body blocked the child and said, uh, how about we don't want, walk up to strange animals that we don't know? And then the mom said, he's three. And then blah, 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 like this self-righteousness, self-righteousness, which maybe was misplaced or maybe was well-placed, depending on your perspective. Then that got quote tweeted by people that were like, why are people so weird about kids? Which my bias is that there is a lot of that online, but it's kind of like unrelated to the story. You found it completely. Go, if you want to hate yourself, go read a hundred replies to uh, the original tweet. It is people arguing, three years old is old enough to know not to touch. I have 22 kids and all of my kids know that they shouldn't. You're right. No kid should ever touch a dog. You should do something bad to yourself because kids are impulsive. You re Here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a soothing balm. None of these people have been outside in 150 years. These are not real people. We can save ourselves. They're lost. We can save ourselves. This is a situation in 1991. If a three-year-old walked up to a dog and the owner said, please don't come close to my dog. I don't want him to bite you. That's the end of the story. The end. It's the kind of thing that if you lived in a city, could have happened to you three times a month or something like that. Nowadays, a bunch of people who never go outside are who are learning about what the outside world is like as if gazing out of a periscope at a deep ocean environment that they will die if they're exposed to are giving their observations about like what the perfect interaction would look like. But it's like a Plato's myth of the cave. You're only seeing the shadows from the light. You weren't there to begin with in the first place. This is just when normal people have the situation you just say, hey, sorry, my kid walked over to your dog, or hey, that's okay, my dog's friendly, or he's not friendly, my bad. You know, it's just, it just happens. Ten times a day, you got nothing to worry about. Online, it gets blown up into this, like, people would like genuinely like, that mom is a bad parent. You don't know what the hell's going on. Then people were like, the lady with the dog is a bad dog owner. Like, you don't know what it's like, man. <laughs> Have some, have some empathy for both parties here. These people are just on their walk to the damn grocery store. People are out here, you know, just uh, maybe they got a call that like their family members in the hospital, they're distracted going down to the parking garage in an elevator. Everyone just really, you're putting too much hyper focus on, on all these little minute social interactions, man. And then the people that were involved in it having opinions is like a, is normal. But then like some dude in Ohio is reading this and I'm like, buddy, they don't even have elevators where you live. And you're out here writing like an essay about the way that I would have responded to this is the world's out there, man. Just walk out the front door. You can experience all sorts of microaggressions like this every single day. You can you can put your perfect wisdom into practice every single time you walk into a new establishment. You got nothing to worry about. Just go live your life, man. This is you can't let it. 
weigh on your psyche like this. Now, do I think that for me personally, was she being a little passive aggressive to a three-year-old? Yes. But in her defense, that is also kind of funny. Like talking to a three-year-old as if they're like the bad guy in a Marvel film is very funny. Especially because they won't get it. Because they're too old to watch Marvel films. Holy cow. The plus twos. He might not have a good understanding of the Canadian medical system. <laughs> but he understands how to say we should be nice to people, but then also slipping in a couple of owns at the end. I just, I, I, what, I, I walked myself back like one level of abstraction when I saw all the discussion related to this stuff. And I was like, man, you don't realize how many situations I could exaggerate every single day on Twitter just to cause like a hundred thousand people to have a horrible night for no reason, even though they weren't there. I was going to move left to not bump into somebody, but then they moved to their right so that we would keep walking and bump into each other. It's so stupid. Everybody should just move to the, are you, did you know well, I grew up in Ohio and Ohio, we moved to the right instead. No, you should never move to the right. That's just how they do it. Or just relax, man. This, someone in chat said, that's what a spouse is for, not Twitter. That's the thing, man. This is what has happened to the, the consequence of the destruction of the modern family. And I'm not talking about the TV show. You used to get together at dinner time and you would say shit that only you get mad about to your spouse. And legally, they have to go, no, you're right. Society's wrong. And then that would dissolve the entire situation. Now it becomes like a, a national media event because there's no safe outlet for these kind of insane discussions. You should get married now. <laughs> Don't you think that marriage is kind of an outdated institute? This is shit you should tell your spouse. This ain't shit for me. This ain't shit for Twitter. You get married and then give your opinions on marriage to your spouse where they trap it inside of an obsidian box and it never leaks out. And society's better as a result. Same thing about people who tell other people about their dreams. No, that's damn true. If you have not had a child with my DNA or alternatively given birth to me, do not tell me about your dream. I don't want to hear it. I don't care if we've been best friends for 10 years. It, that's the thing about dreams is because of the fucked up morphology of the human brain. They have emotional significance to you because you experience them firsthand. But when you start explaining it to another person, they're not experiencing it the same way you did. They're just going, uh-huh, uh-huh, whoa, until the end. Now you could do that for your spouse. That's the damn law, okay? But if my dad starts telling me about a dream he had, brother... Are you okay? My mom, I'll cut her a little bit of slack. She carried me for 40 weeks, you know? My dad, though, and then all my teeth fell out. Then I showed up at work and I wasn't wearing any pants. I know, dad. I know. Men can't talk to each other. Who are you, the librarian? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, don't tell me about your dreams unless you're my spouse. Or if I'm like a dream fucking dude, <laughs> I don't know really what that means. Well, you know, if I get paid to hear about your dreams, I wouldn't be like, don't tell me about your dreams, it's bad for business. A therapist? I don't really know, is, it, is a therapist like a dream person? I don't think so. I think if I went to my therapist and I started telling them about the dreams that I have, they would be like, we're here to talk about like real stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm projecting onto my therapist, but like, I think my therapist is kind of good. So I think she would tell me, you know, we only got 42 minutes left on the clock. You sure you want to spend $172 on this dream shit? I get it. Your teeth fell out. I get it. You showed up for the class and you thought it was just a lecture, but actually it was the final exam and you haven't studied. But like, you got some real shit to work through. Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> it's your money. You notice that the dude who was streaking at uh, It's a Small World looked... A little bit like Daniel Radcliffe in the Weird Al movie. 
Okay, I'm back. I got brain worms from the service dog post. You missed the... I'm sorry, that's my fault. You missed the part where I said you have to remember that the thousands of people that are all dissecting the social, social interaction are not real people. They're real in the sense that they're made of flesh and carbon and they consume resources and produce waste the same way any of us do. They're not real in the sense that you would ever observe them in an environment. They're unobservable. They're like the Higgs boson, okay? You would need like a new piece of machinery in order to ever have them impact the environment that you're in. The only way that they can affect you is if you invite them into your house vampire style by reading the insane responses to that thread. I never have the, the teeth fall out, by the way. That's not the, the dream of choice for me. My, my nightmare dream is either I'm on an airplane going back to South Korea, as I've talked about myriad times, or um, I'm showing up for school. And it's, it, it's illogical, but I show up for a lecture in university, and it's like... How'd you guys do on the exam? And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't show up for class yesterday. I thought it was just a class, but it turns out it's the exam. I, I got a zero on the exam. Now, why are they still having classes after the exam? Why am I showing up to classes after the exam? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. We're not your wife. Don't tell us. Fuck. You got me. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Even though you asked, you still got me. You motherfucker, you... Classic, I haven't gone to class all semester. I'm fucked, Dream. Yeah, that's uh, that's the one for me. Holy cow, we're cooking. The fucked up thing about the Korea Dream is that I'm always like, no, this is a good idea. This is a great idea. And then as soon as I land, I'm like, fuck, what am I doing, bro? I'm stuck here for a year. Oh, no, no, no. When I'm on the plane, I'm like, this is the right decision for me right now. The dream me is like, this is going to be a lot of fun. You ever think that maybe part of the problem with modern society these days is that um, in 1963, all of the world's greatest minds were working at NASA, building rocket ships, inventing faster ways to get around planet Earth and stuff like that, generating clean electricity. And now they're all out here beating my ass in sap at 1.57 p.m. on a Monday. It's true, I'm a CPA doing jack shit. This is an honest, not uh, messed up question, okay? Like, I'm not trying to hate on you or anything. If you are a CPA, what do you do from... May until December. I'm sure you got some very proactive clients who like January 3rd, they're like, here's an uh, envelope full of receipts and stuff like that. So you can get started on the taxes. Late filing all the way to October. I would be so fucking stressed out, man. As the person late filing, I've got a CPA friend that seems to always be tax season. I guess, well, it is always tax season, right? People file late. Corporations have different ends to their fiscal year. Then there's different taxes. You know, there's like, there's income tax, corporate tax, payroll tax, etc., etc. Some phantom tax, so true. They're still trying to figure out the legislation for that one. No, please, 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 nobody tell Justin Trudeau about the phantom tax. Please. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting so many minus twos for that. What is funny, man? That is funny. <laughs> I can't tell if you're minus twoing me because you think I like Justin Trudeau, minus twoing me because you think I hate Justin Trudeau, minus twoing me because you don't like when a 35 year old man is saying things like the phantom tax. I can't, there's too many possible reasons for a minus two. I don't know what the phantom tax is. Little bro said phantom tax. <laughs> he doesn't even know. So tr Rick Moranis be like, Jean Poutine says he's going to abolish the phantom tax. Would love to know your thoughts on this. Somebody from Ohio speaks directly into the camera. Congratulations, 
Prime Minister Jean Poutin for abolishing the phantom tax. People watching that shit in Moose Factory, like, they're so stupid. They're so stupid. They don't even know we don't have a phantom tax. See, I can insult Moose Factory as well. I can insult my own country. It's not just Ohio. The problem is, people are like, why is he going so hard on Ohio? Well, the first time I said it, everybody laughed. And then, like, it became, like, a thing. So now it's not only funny, but it's referential, which makes it even funnier. So it's, like, self-reinforcing. Ohio's got a lot of... It's got to, got to do a lot of climbing to get itself out of the hole we dug. Anyway, I know I said that it was with no disrespect, but I know you guys are just chilling. May to December, I know you're just chilling. Also, I don't want to stress any streamers out, like, if they're still in here. But, like... Sometimes I'll watch a streamer, they're talking about taxes. And then they're like, are my taxes are due. But then they just are like, I'm just going to do late filing. Can you just do that? Like, I feel like if I was the IRS, I would be like, oh, and why did you file late this year? And they'd be like, I just didn't really get around to it. I would be like, well, fuck you, bro. You owe, you owe me a penalty. <laughs> You can literally just ask for an extension and they're like, yeah, no problem. Really? Why is anybody filing their taxes, bro? My accountant even recommends it. Oh, because I want my refund. That makes sense. But like, these are streamers. They are not paying quarterly. That's too much work. So you know they're not getting a refund. It's like the streamer tax cycle. Like, it, I'm, listen, this is how you know my audience is getting too old. Ten years ago, they'd be like, shut up! Now they're like, okay, speak on that. Streamer is like, you know, May 1st. I'm going to do better on my taxes this year. I'm going to pay quarterly. Six months go by. Well, it's too late to pay quarterly now. I'm stressed out about tax season. Tax season comes. They file. They get hit with like an enormous one-time tax bill. Uh, you should really pay quarterly next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it. But now I'm so stressed out, but taxes are over. I get a little bit of relief. I don't have to think about them for six months. Okay, it's too late to start paying quarterly now. I just go, oh, brother. Yeah, you can put this in the sleep aid section of the compilation librarian. It's hurting my psyche too much. I'm just saying, like... I don't know how it works. Maybe it's the same in Canada. I'm not trying to say like it's an American thing. It might be the same in Canada. Maybe if you're like, you know, sorry, I didn't file my taxes April 22nd or something. They'd be like, no problem. Did you have a good reason? I'd be like, uh, uh I was kind of sleepy. They'd be like, all right, just get them done whenever. Or is it like get them done whenever, but then when you do them, they're like, you owe us more than expected because we applied like retroactive interest to it for the stuff that you should have owned, owed us in April. My wife's in chat roasting me. She said, tomorrow's my 50th birthday. <laughs> I'm still not weird about my age. It is my birthday tomorrow, though, it's true. This is where the audience stands up and applauds. And then despite not being 25, I say something like, yep, turning 22 again. And they go, ha, 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 ha. And then I say, but seriously, folks, can you imagine a 22-year-old kid on the front lines of World War II being like, you really want me to go in there, Commander? It's my birthday week. Kids these days have it too easy. You know, I'm sorry, I'm working on my Netflix special right here. It's going to be me and Matt Reif. Anyway, I was, it puts it in perspective, though. I'm still not worried about my age. I'm, what's the point, right? I'm not concerned about my age is maybe a better way to describe it. But Kate said, you're turning 35 tomorrow. And I said, yeah. And then I said, it was more to freak her out than anything else. I said, yep, halfway to 70. Dude, you should have seen her face. I owned her so good. I was like, you're married to a damn skeleton, basically, like half a skeleton. Then she said, yeah, but you could do that for like any year. And I said, yeah, but 68 still seems kind of spry. 70 is like, you're getting up there. I know it's only halfway, but still. You're 15 away from 50. Yeah, that's still weird. No offense to the 50-year-old streamers that are like already out there. But the idea of being a 50-year-old streamer is like fucking hilarious, bro. Like Corey. 
Corey's only 40, okay? And he's on Thanksgiving holiday right now. Let's be nice to Corey, folks. Sips is getting the Sips has got to be like 44 or something, right? It's not an insult. There's nothing, I mean, there's nothing right or wrong about being 50. What are you going to do? Not be 50? There's only like two ways for that to happen. Be born less than 50 years ago or be fucking dead. I'll take the, I'll take the 50 then in that case. There's nothing wrong with being 50. But it's very funny to be like a 50-year-old streamer. And I'm well on my way to that. You're going to have 40-year-old viewers. That's true. It's almost funnier that there's like... There's going to be... I mean, this is so much ruder because it's like... We went from like punching across to punching way down. I was going to say it's so funny that there will be 50-year-old viewers on Twitch, but then there already are probably watching this right now that are like, well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Okay. Like, dude, it's crazy. In 10 years, there's going to be 50-year-old chatters. <laughs> Some CPA in chat who isn't doing shit right now because it's not the end of the fiscal year yet. Just sitting there racking up billable hours to... Press three buttons in Excel over and over. I think if you are an accountant, you should overcharge your clients, myself included. Why? Because fuck them. They decided they didn't want to do it themselves. Make their pockets hurt. They're basically, anytime you get hired by a client, it's an insult, right? They're basically saying, my time's too important to do this shit. You fucking deal with it. So you got to hit them where it hurts. Isn't that every contractor? Yeah, but if you were like mow my lawn and the landscapers hit you with like a $500 invoice, you would take them to federal court. If your accountant hit you with an invoice like that, what are you going to do? You can't fuck with your accountant. What are you going to They're, they're going to get you implicated in tax fraud. I think about that all the time. I'm like, my accountant, I don't know what they do. So I always just try to stay on their good side. They're doing some shit over in the lab. I don't know fully what it is. They know the ledgers. They know the laws. I got to keep a good relationship with them. Because if I'm ever like, if I'm 15 minutes late for an appointment, couldn't they be like, eh, here's some shit like we shouldn't have done. Oh, it would be a shame if this happened to find itself on the CRA's desk, right? Or do they, that eh, doesn't make sense. They probably have some kind of oversight, right? <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I guess. My, my view of an accountant is that an accountant is basically legal tax fraud. That might be a stupid way to look at it. But is this one of those things where people are going to be like, no, that's not what it's like. But then all the accountants are going to be like, well, legally speaking, it's not fraud, but they are taking advantage of things that normal people can't that seem like it shouldn't be legal, but... You got to read the tax code, son. This is not a joke. I remember asking my accountant a question. This is like six or seven years ago or something. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. What you're telling me doesn't make sense. And then I asked him what the basis of it was. And dude whipped out some shit from like 13th century English law. It was like some kind of legal precedent that was established in the era of like Richard the Lionheart. And then he's like, well, you see, because Canada, Canadian law is based off of British law. This is in the legal record as like a precedent that has stood up in court for eight centuries. And I was like, you know what, brother? Fuck me. I shouldn't have asked. You're right. I shouldn't have asked the, the question. You do your job. I don't know why I'm out here trying to be like your work is fake. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, obviously, you're doing a good job. Uh, I'm going to stay in my lane. You can stay in yours. I'm going to assume that you know what you're doing, whether that's true or not. Thoughts on murder? Well, according to King John II, murder is illegal. It goes against the British idea of Magna Carta, which is English for respect for life. Do you guys know about the Japanese writer Mishima? Did you know? I saw that tweet too. Dude, I didn't know that he was one of the most celebrated writers of the 20th century and then got on stage to try to encourage a military coup in 1970 
to have the Japanese military reinstate imperial rule in Japan. And the soldiers booed him so mercilessly that he committed seppuku in the room that was adjoining the balcony. Riz so bad he blanked himself, but for real, they literally heckled his ass to death. I was also... <laughs> this is not funny, really, but it is kind of remarkable, I guess. I also read... Because as soon as I saw that on Twitter, I was like, I gotta check out this motherfucker's Wikipedia article. So he knew he was gonna commit seppuku. When you commit seppuku, apparently, I don't want to sound like an expert, you need a second. Not like an increment of time, but you need somebody to chop off your heads to save you from pain after you disembowel yourself. But the dude who was his second uh, was incapable of chopping his head off in three swipes. So this motherfucker needed a third, but you know that it's already fucked up. I can't imagine like being like dying and then almost having your head chopped off and then being like, could you just give it to the other guy? Like, come, come on guys, come on. Like that's not the way I want to go. But then secondly, before the dude committed seppuku, he was also like, I'm going to do it. Nobody else do it. And then his second was like, I'm going to do it. Nobody should ever die alone. And then he was like, please don't do it. So then after the first dude's head got chopped off, the other dude committed seppuku, so immediately invalidated the first dude's wishes. And then the dude who was the backup second for the dude who's now committing seppuku had to chop that motherfucker's head off too. That dude just showed up to like give them the air of having a crowd around them and all of a sudden he had to cut off two motherfuckers' heads? He didn't sign up for that. Hey bro, can you show up to our rally tomorrow? We just want to make it look like we got a lot of people who agree with us. Okay, but I'm not really going to do anything. That's fine, don't worry about it. By the way, bring your sword. Like it's... That being said, if I was the second and the dude was like... I'm going to commit seppuku, nobody else do it, I would be like, yes, <laughs> fuck yes, thank dude, you had no idea, I was so nervous about this, I was like, I couldn't sleep last night. It's like when you haven't studied for a test, and then your teacher says like, you, know, you get a substitute teacher the next day, and they're like, oh, the test is going to come tomorrow instead, you're like, oh. That I'm saved. And then your dumb ass doesn't study the next night either. Because you're like, if they're sick by on that day, they'll probably be sick on the next day. But then they're back the next day. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> How did you do that? No, no. Coke Zero burp. Don't worry. Ew, gross. Bro, that's a medical burp. I had norovirus this weekend. Get over it. That one was for fun. You can say fuck me for that one, okay? Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. I think we're playing Lethal Company tomorrow. I gotta, I gotta get a confirmation on that. But I think that is indeed the case. I'm excited. It looks like flavor of the month, and I'm here for it. Every clip of it is the funniest thing I've ever seen. It looks like phasmophobia, but fun. I give it two weeks. Streamer who is still playing Spelunky 2. Mouth, why don't you play complete lethal company with us tomorrow? Have you seen what people are playing on this website right now? Like we we need something. Two weeks would be a damn blessing, man. Only if I get 10 follows. Okay, chat, I don't think it's fair, but he's made his demands, okay? 10 follows is that's a pretty small ask. I'm done with this hell site. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send you over to Kate. Enjoy the rest of your evening. See you tomorrow. Later. Let me try it again. First things first, I'm the realist. Drop the bass, make the whole place feel this. And I'm still in the murder business. I can hold you down like I'm teaching lessons in physics. You should want a bad like me. Something, something, something like me. Cup of ace, cup of goose, cup of crisp, cup of poop with a tapa, tapa, tapa on my wrist.